Here with Tony Vargas, and uh, we were just discussing a little bit about uh, security awareness within the enterprise and corporate environment. And uh, uh, where do you want to begin with this, Tony? So we talk about availability. That'd be a very important security. Can you make your camera make me look good? You know, uh, availability. So you know, security awareness. I think many things that we found to be successful in order to have security or to have programs that are successful. You know, one thing that we found is try to link the, the digital world and the physical world together. You know, a lot of people have a real problem with that. They they kind of take the digital world for granted, you know, as an example, right? So if somebody knocks on your door, are you going to open the door if you don't know who they are? Yeah. No. But you get an email from suddenly, and suddenly it's somebody you don't know, and it's okay to open the email. Boom. Systems are down. I think if, you can exp if we can explain in our security awareness programs to the corporation about the parallels between the physical world we live in and also the digital world, that's really brief. Uh, um, really makes a connection for people so that it can help them be you know, safer in the cyber world. I think other things are, what I see a lot is people want to do the right thing. And, and, and deep down, I think that people are really good. I, I don't believe, personally, people are evil. But um, sometimes they just don't know what to do. Or they'll think it's a security person's um, responsibility for security. And I think that that's maybe a fault on our industry, right? We need to get out of it. I think security, and for it to be successful in awareness programs too without a company, people have to feel like they're part of the solution. They, they want to be, but they also think it's, well, I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. I think if we get some solutions that make security relatively easy, then you can have successful awareness programs because there's something tangible that somebody can do at the end of the day. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to click on that email. Or, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to let that person walk in right behind me. So I think that, you know, if you look at like O'Reilly's cookbooks, for instance, they're very successful. Why are they successful? Because they're cookbooks. They're little solutions that people can do. And I think if we do security, and what we found with security awareness programs, if we do it in small chunks, bite-sized chunks that people can do, it works out. Because security overall, right, people just get overwhelmed. I mean, even security professionals, right? We read a security book, and it's like, oh my God, there's so much stuff in there. But if you take it in small little chunks, something applicable, something but somebody can do, you know, a little checklist, um, that's how you do security awareness program successfully. And we've found that that'll work. You know, again, drive home the physical and the digital world, make those so that people, the analogy, so they understand, bite-sized chunks, and make them part of the solution. You know, don't, it's not just a security person's responsibility for security, it's everybody. And I think once you do that, uh, we know that you can make highly successful security awareness programs. Okay, and so, well, how do you get the employees engaged? Because, you know, as soon as you say, okay, it's uh, it's time for your yearly security awareness update, class, everybody rolls their eyes, go, I know, I know, I don't, I don't click on links, I don't open attachments, uh, blah, blah, blah. How do we get them engaged? Because they are clicking on the links, they are opening the attachments, they are letting somebody walk in right behind them. Well, so I think that this goes into the business. This goes into the business side of what your company is doing. So, for instance, you want to know what the financial years are, right? So you want to know what the financial years are. You want to know what the quarters are because you can start looking at budgeting something. If you're suddenly just going to do a security awareness program and drop it on them, you got to be cognizant of what's going on in the business. Are people busy because they're trying to get, you know, quarter in? Because all your financial analysts are going to be busy with that. Your executives are going to get prepared after the quarter to start doing. Um, you know, financial press releases and stuff. You kind of got to know what timing is and, and budget perspective when you do these awareness programs to make them successful. You can't just drop it. So you have to do a lot of planning. You know, what you are trying to accomplish today, realistically, instead of been something you would were playing, were laying the seeds for many years in advance. Yeah, it might so take. But I think, but there's two ways to what you were talking about. So one is companies can try to make it mandatory, right? There's a financial impact to the company and you want to get those big uh, stakeholders on board. Okay, look, this is what this is going to save you, or this is going to be, you can mandate it to them. But the first way is, again, make them part of the solution for the problem. Make it a reward. You know, we, you get a lot more bees with honey than you do vinegar, right? So why don't we do that with the same security awareness? You know, security professionals overall, we're seen as obstacles. We're not seen as people that are trying to help them with the solution. It's like, you know what? I'm trying to do something. Oh, God, I got the security thing. Well, let's just make a ward. You know what? Say, hey, we thank you so much for doing X, Y, Z. You did the right thing. That positive reinforcement is going to get a lot further for us, and it does in security awareness programs as opposed to all the negatives of it. You know, not only does it bring the users down because they're like, shoot, I screwed up. But then also it's like we come across and, and we're portrayed in the evil light. And realistically, that's not it, right? People make decisions. It's not the security pro professionals. 
Um, we don't have the ability to make all the decisions, but yet, what do people do? Oh, hey, it was a security guy again. So what we need to do is we need to, um, again, reward people. Hey, you did a good job. You guys are doing the right thing. Look, we got some numbers that are down. If you show, um, you know, when you're, as, as you do this over time, the security awareness, keep track of the metrics, you know? Are, are we making, are are we making How do you measure outcomes effectively? How do you measure outcomes? Well, it depends. I, you can do it, um, I mean, you can monitor them, you know, on like a, at the endpoint level. Um, how do you keep track of the metrics? You can, well, some of the products you can do, I mean, for spam, I mean, that's not, that's not a big, you can talk about like the spam that went through the filter, perhaps, that they, you know, clicked on. Um, the endpoint metrics. Because um, at some point, you're going to have to be able to, to show that there's value in the program that's working, and it's not just a, uh, you know, a, a mechanistic thing that you're, you're doing, you're not just going through the motions. Well, you can do it, if you do it, um, if you do it, it depends on what your market is. That will that can help um, that can help determine what your success and you can use metrics. So, for instance, a financial company, right? So, if you get compromised and it's X Y Z amount of money, you can see that in your financial bottom lines, right? It's very visible. Um, if you do something in perhaps even you know industrial control systems, that might be another one where if something goes offline, it affects X Y Z number of people. That's another potential way you can do. It. I mean, those are high level things. Um, I think if you look at like you know bugs for software, right? You can keep track of the metrics of are you do you have more bugs? Do you have less bugs over time? You can look at it. Well, you have a bunch of quality metrics. You know that's from like a, an engineering perspective. Um, and then if you had to if you had to finish up with uh, something, what's a what's a something key uh, if you're starting a, a security awareness program? Uh, where should you begin? Where should you begin? So it does help to have you know executive buy off. If you're starting to, when you start to put this program together, you're not just going to say, boom, I need a security awareness program. What you want to do is you want to plan it out ahead of time. So start laying those seeds out a couple of years. Try to get the um, support of the key um, stakeholders in the company. Um, make it a positive experience. Again, bring back solutions that work. You know, tie the digital world and the physical world together. Um, those are all the most important things that we've that I've seen with security awareness programs overall. Make people part of the solution uh, and be positive about it. And you know, it, it sounds pretty simple. I mean, right? It, it was only like three or four points, but that simplicity is what makes it successful. Try to Tony Vargas, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.